everyone, MB here out on a beautiful sunny day in late March. I'm standing beside a giant sugar maple because today's lesson is all about maple syrup. Now the maple syrup season has pretty much wrapped up in the Peterborough area, but I've had some friends share with me footage of their homemade maple syrup operations. Maple syrup is most definitely a Canadian tradition. Over 85% of the world's maple syrup is produced right here in Canada, primarily in Ontario and in Quebec. Give me a thumbs up if you like maple syrup. I know I sure do. Maple syrup is the secret ingredient in my wild turkey pot pie. In today's lesson, we'll take a look at the process behind making maple syrup, from start to finish, from tree to table. To start, let's learn how to properly identify a sugar maple. While other tree species produce edible sap, it's the sugar maple that yields the most and the sweetest. Because sap is harvested in late winter and early spring, it's important to know how to identify a sugar maple in the absence of leaves. Their branches, their twigs, and their buds are arranged opposite from one another. The terminal bud is very sharp. So to help me remember this, sugar is sharp. The bark on a mature sugar maple is very rough with stiff vertical plates of bark that don't easily rub off. And lastly, their leaf. Visible in late spring, summer, and fall, there are five lobes on a sugar maple, separated by a U-shape. Think of the word sugar. It has the letter U in it. This will help you to remember those U-shapes. The best time of year to tap trees is in late winter or early spring. Ideally, when the temperatures are below freezing or zero degrees Celsius at night and above freezing during the day. First, begin by drilling a hole at approximately 1 to 1.5 meters above the ground. To ensure you don't damage the tree, the hole you drill must be no deeper than 6 centimeters. Drill the hole on a slight upwards angle to help the sap flow out. Next, insert this item. Any guesses as to what it's called? A spoke, a spigot, a spike, or a spile? That's right, a spile. They can be made from metal or plastic and either attach to a plastic line or connect to a bucket to collect the sap. Specifically, it's the sap from the xylem cells that are used to make maple syrup. It's the xylem cells that are responsible for bringing water and nutrients from the soil up to the rest of the tree. The ratio is approximately 40 to 1 when it comes to making maple syrup, meaning that you will need 40 liters of sap to make one liter of syrup, but this can vary slightly. Once the sap has been collected, it's important to keep it cold until you're ready to boil. Ideally, you'll boil it outside over the heat of a wood-burning fire. Boiling down the sap can take several hours, so make sure you've got lots of firewood handy, a comfortable place to sit, some good company. And the vessel that you boil the sap in is also very important. Ideally, the more surface area, the better. Once the sap is significantly reduced, the color will start to change to a darker amber color because there is a fine line between when the sap is almost ready and boiled too far some people will bring the sap inside for the final stages of boiling. You can use a thermometer to determine when the boiled sap is ready. But because the exact temperature can vary, even day to day because of the changing atmospheric pressure, many people use a hydrometer. A hydrometer measures the relative density of liquids, in this case maple syrup. And now for the best part, time to enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. 
Be sure to like this video and comment below. And if you'd like to learn more about the sugar maple, reach out by email to book a free live virtual question and answer session with one of our educators. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.